All right. Hello, everyone. It was January night in VR chat when something very strange happened. Suddenly, a man embodying a red robot avatar collapsed to the ground. His breathing was heavy and his movements were jumpy. Other people in this virtual environment gathered around him to examine what was happening. But the robot didn't stop. He was unresponsive to the other players who had gathered around him. Due to his motion tracking gear, it was clear that the robot and its controller were having a seizure. While VRChat is described as a virtual world chat room, it's worth remembering that people behind the avatars are very real. With no identity, no contact information, or no context to what was happening, bystanders in this virtual world were able to do nothing. The onlookers here all knew that there was a real person behind this red robot avatar, and he was in a serious need for medical help. We use our online identities daily. Every time we communicate with our friends through social media profile, shop online by accessing our Amazon account, play Fortnite as a video game character, or embody an avatar in VR, we are using our online identity. Online identity actually can mean many different things, and it's quite a vague term. Thus, I'd like to focus today on talking about our visual identity. Visual identity is how we represent other people's identities in our minds and how other people recognize us. Visual identity is an essential part of our human communication. So in the early internet, we used text to represent our identities online, like a username. But since the rise of social media, the need to express our identities visually has become increasingly important. Today, pictures and videos on our social media profiles make us who we are, or at least that's how other people on the internet see us and how we see them. Or even take, take Bitmoji, which is your own personal emoji. With over 300 million Bitmoji users, people are even using Bitmojis on their resumes when applying to jobs these days. But that is all using the 2D interface would have today. From companies like Apple, Google, Facebook, building those AR and VR devices to games becoming the way kids communicate, we are seeing an industry-wide shift from 2D to 3D that's revolutionizing the way we interact and collaborate with each other. Soon, people from different parts of the world will be able to communicate with their friends, family, and colleagues in virtual worlds, just as if they're in the same room together. As technology develops, the lines between our digital and physical world become increasingly blurred. Imagine being able to create a true-to-life replica of anything or anyone in a matter of seconds. So with this new era beginning to unfold, we're still faced with some unanswered questions in respect to our online identities. More specifically, how should we represent ourselves in those virtual worlds? AR and VR has not reached the mass market yet, but the problem already exists today. Games are showing us a glimpse of what it does mean to live in those virtual worlds. Games are becoming the way kids communicate these days. Games are the new social media. Kids under 13 are spending more time playing and socializing in Roblox than on Facebook, YouTube, and Netflix combined. Just think about it for a moment. Fortnite has similar statistics, and even the larger user base of 
200 million monthly active users. When playing Fortnite, you will realize quite quickly that those kids are not that concerned about the game at all. They seem more preoccupied with catching up and sharing the latest about their day. Those platforms have become a digital hangout places for the new generation, much like basketball courts and skate parks were for the previous ones. Hanging out on a basketball court was never only about the game. I remember spending hours on a bas basketball court with my friends, just talking. It is more about having some sort of activity to gather around. So today, my 11-year-old niece doesn't meet up with her friends on a basketball court, but rather she does it online in a Fortnite server. Also, she has friends worldwide from Canada, Russia, and so on. When I was her age, I was lucky if I managed to make a friend with a kid across my street. Games are connecting people around the world, and they're providing a safe place to hang out and socialize. If Fortnite would add virtual reality support today, we would already have Ready Player One style experience. Games are the first step towards our AR, VR powered virtual world's future. So, just use your identity on the web today is tied to your Facebook and LinkedIn profile picture. Identity in games like Roblox and Fortnite, it's three dimensional and it's tied to your avatar. Given the social nature of those games, People want to differentiate, and they do it by personalizing their avatars. Fortnite, for example, makes as much as two to three hundred million dollars per month by selling avatar-related customization items like virtual T-shirts and virtual trousers. This this shows us a glimpse of how connected our real-life identities have become with our virtual ones. So as I mentioned earlier, I am a true believer that over the next decade, online communication will be increasingly dominated by virtual worlds. And yes, games are certainly a big part of this virtual world's future, but it's rather tip of the iceberg. The move from 2D to 3D will initiate the fundamental shift in how people are expected to interact with real and digital objects across all different industries, from education, retail, enterprise productivity, and more. Today, major car manufacturers like Audi and Ford are reviewing their car designs in VR. Chinese schools are providing virtual field trips for their classes. Product prototypes and even houses are built by remote teams virtually. And you can even meet your friends in a virtual space from across the world to watch a football game together. AR and VR is taking place in all major industries today in some shape or form. Meeting someone in AR or VR feels like being in the same room together. It's way more personal than any video call or chat could ever be. And that's something that any other form of communication technology has not been able to provide before. But in order to meet someone in AR, VR, you need something to represent yourself in those virtual worlds. Those emerging technologies are not only changing the way we interact and collaborate with each other, but they're also changing the concept of our online identities. So one thing is clear. Avatars are going to be the way people represent themselves in the future. 
Avatars are the new form of identity. With the platforms and tools available today, never before, we have had this much power to stretch, tear and mold our identity so easily. You have complete freedom over your visual re representation for the virtual world. You can be a monster, you can be a car, or you can be yourself. You have all the tools available today to choose your visual representation for the virtual world. After spending years in this space, talking about this very same topic, I found that people have two completely different philosophies when it comes to our online identities. It's either full anonymity or real life identity. Those are two completely different, completely opposites. I believe that given the social nature of virtual worlds, a place where you can meet other people from across the world and create lifelong relationships, a critical mass of people wants online interactions to, so, to be supported by real-life identities. Connecting with others is a part of our human nature. But majority of virtual worlds today only support avatars that are anonymous. And that's mainly because avatar technology that allows you to create a unique avatar of yourself has required specialized hardware and is expensive. So far, this personal avatar technology has been accessible to only a limited number of people. Take the man embodying a red robot out there from the beginning of our presentation. With no identity, no contact information, bystanders were able to do, that, to do nothing. Some of them might have even known the guy because he was a long-time player, but they just couldn't recognize him. Luckily, the man is alive today, and he was able to share his story. Thus, I believe that majority of avatars in the future will be connected with our real-world identities. The same way as platforms like Facebook and Google created the real name policy for the web we are all using today. And that's something that we at Wolf3D also focus on. By creating a technology that allows anyone to create a unique 3D avatar of themselves. Our goal is to provide you your persistent identity that travels with you across your virtual world experiences. From your late night meeting in VR to review the latest car design to a virtual concert in Fortnite that you're planning to attend with your friends, you will always have one persistent identity. We are already, we're already working today with some of the top companies from the fashion industry, gaming industry, but also AR, VR industry to accomplish our vision. Our technology uses a single 2D image, and we can generate a high-quality 3D avatar in under five seconds, all done automatically. That's how easy it is. We have worked very hard to make it easily integratable with developers building virtual world experiences, but we've also focused a lot on making this avatar generation technology accessible to anyone from anywhere in the world. Throughout our experience, we have learned that everyone has different personas cultivated over the years, and you may change it slightly depending on the situ situation. For example, you probably act and dress different in a boardroom than you do in a bar with friends. In a boardroom, you are more officially dressed, serious version of yourself. Versus in a bar, you're more casually dressed, sunny, 
like funny social version of yourself. But people still tend to see you according to a singular persona. I believe we'll see a similar phenomena in virtual worlds where you might have a stylized, cute-looking avatar version of yourself for social activities, like in this application called Howl. In Howl, you can create content for your social media using your own personal avatar, but it also allows you to have face-to-face -face conversations with other people inside the app. Another partner of ours called High Fidelity uses more formal-looking realistic characters for business purpose. High Fidelity <laughs> provides a solution for remote teams so they could collaborate virtually. We've seen people in High Fidelity having multiple avatar versions of themselves that they could use depending on the situation, whether it's more casual meeting or more formal meeting. But in both cases, your identity likeness remains the same throughout the experience. But it also gives you enough customizability to express your personality through the look and feel of the avatar. I do believe that avatars are the new form of identity. And we can already see it happening today with games, which is why the industry and the consumers need to have a discussion about how far both individuals and companies can go when it comes to identity, pseudonymity, or how identity is managed across platforms. We are all going to be interacting with more and more digital avatars online perhaps sooner than we think. Thank you.